Before you tuck into Australia's most energetic podcast, check out Australia's most energy efficient super smart air conditioning. My Place IQ is here. For more, visit myplace.com.au. This is the Pete and Kimber podcast. Now, Kimber, can I read you a text message? Yes. That I got from um, our mate Ben Cousins. Sure. It says, uh, G'day, Pete. Well done on Telethon, brother. Good sport. It was really funny. I think, he was, I think he was buttering me up because he was coming in today. Show me your hands, Ben. Show me your hands. Put them up. Okay, I know you don't empty. trust him. It's I don't just trust that him. while we were Pete. at Telethon on the weekend, don't you Pete me. Ben <laughs> called through and said, if Pete gets pied in the face, I'll donate 500 bucks to Telethon. And so, man, did the pies come thick and fast. It Had it not taken a split second... For numerous pies to hit your face, I may have thought it was the wrong move. But <laughs> People jump hard in to deny that. Hard to deny that, really. Sure. Absolutely <laughs> Swept sure. up in the cause I was. Sorry. Um, now, here's the thing, mate. So your, your little escapades, right? And uh, thank you for donating the money to the kids at Tel I'm, I'm happy, do. happy to get pied in the face for that. Um, but... Uh, your escapades started a landslide of people thinking, well, Pete's just fair game now, isn't he? So we're just going to spend the next few days pieing him in the face. Whenever he least expects it. Like Monday, for example, when we were just sitting in the studio and we just finished a break on air and then producer Rami came in to say, okay, well done, guys. Pie in the face. Yeah, and he's, what? He's not the only one. My boss, Speedy. Oh, uh, yesterday. Got us yesterday. Is, is there like a protocol? What is this? I didn't, because when, I, when I've... When I've um, Issued the challenge. I didn't. Does that last till next <laughs> telethon or what? What's the? Where's the stop and start? <laughs> I, I listen to this. Like this maybe there's it's a twelve month window. This is the last few days. This the last just few days. I Sunday. haven't checked the fine print before I'd done this. This listen. could have ramifications. Well, then long. we've got a long year ahead because this is only since Sunday. Ben Cousins, he's just offered five hundred dollars if Pete cops a pie in the face. <laughs> that, that wheezing's Squ- producer Ray. He could squealing. Yeah. Help, help. <laughs> producer Ravi can hardly. He's uh, wheezing every time, laughing, sound, and I'm laughing so much. It didn't sound like him at all. We have to, yeah. So, no. I, so we've got all those videos are online, by the way, on the um, mixed socials. I do feel yeah. that our boss doing it to you yesterday was one of the best ones I've seen that because it really funny. came without notice. No one expected it. We're in a very important meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Have we funny, got vision of that one? Oh yeah, they, they've uh, all been recorded yeah, on the socials. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I don't like oh. the sound. Yeah. No, no one likes the sound of a drone. No. You really think that I'd let you get away with that over the past few days? Well, Ben was getting revenge on you for all the things you've made I'm, him do. I'm, I'm just know. trying to work my way up to being square. Yeah. Are you being square? <laughs> being square? <laughs> no, you're about to become square in just a few moments, mate. Um, so here's here's a poncho, right? So here's a poncho. Oh, yeah. I'm going to need you to put that on because I know you've got to go to seven after this, right? Oh, wicked. <laughs> <coughs> And guess what? Kimba, here's a poncho for you as well. <laughs> because I happen to know, through very good sources, that you've been in on it the entire time. Of course I was in on it. Now, you've been under the impression that it was going to be myself versus Ben in a pop quiz this morning. You think that? But you think I'm that stupid? No, I was I like, no one's mentioned me all week in this pie. And I was like, my time is coming. No, I, I knew it was coming. I know you're not that stupid. <laughs> Um, what I'm hoping is you're stupid enough. So I've got a quiz between you two. Okay. We're going to do a quiz this morning. Now, every time you get a question wrong, you will get pied in the face. Oh, wicked. Okay. All right. Kimber versus Ben. And guess what? It's questions about each other. Because we've gotten to know each other for so the, the last few months. Yeah, okay. back and forward. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. That whipped cream. Get it onto the plate, Rami. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a lot for one face. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> Kimba, mm-hmm. name one of Ben Cousins' kids' names. Oh, no. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
I don't. Oh my Three, god, Ben's trying to cheat. He wants to help me. Two. Kylie. One. <laughs> Why did Rami hit me so hard? So hard. Sorry. I didn't even wow. hear it. Oh, that's nice. Ah, that's good. Oh okay. my god. Feel well. Um, <laughs> Oh, get no. another one up. Ben. He, when he comes in, he just says my daughter or my son. <laughs> Rami, go a bit harder. I really want to hear it. Oh, I want to yeah, feel yeah. it. All right. Um, ben. No. What is <laughs> what is Kimber's last name? <laughs> <laughs> You're joking. This is a gimme. <laughs> Three. <laughs> two. <laughs> one. Oh, you went so gentle. Mama, you're being too gentle. I'm going to hurt the beautiful face. (laughs) Kimber, back to you. Okay. Every one you get wrong, (laughs) you're getting cream pie in the face. It's Cahill, by the way. Kimber, what year did Ben win the premiership with the West Coast Eagles? 2005. That is incorrect. Sure. 2005 was the loss against Sydney. 2006 oh. was the win against oh Sydney. God. Ben, over to you. <laughs> you just wish you'd tried harder that year. <laughs> <laughs> You're only a point away. Oh, no. Name one of Kimber's previous jobs prior to radio. <sighs> um... Apparently, I've had thousands of them. You've Everyone had a lot. seems to think I've had a lot of jobs. You've had a lot. We've talked about this. Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, both of us have got the worst memories. Both Bennett, we actually talk about this is how horrible. bad our memories are. This is <laughs> horrid. Come on, just um, throw something out there. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's all over your face now. I, mean, I would have accepted bakery... Assistant, um, I would have said a teacher. Teacher. Kimba? Teacher. Yeah. Mm. All right, last one. Now, Rami, I, I really want to hear it. I want to hear it, okay? Okay. All right, this Wait, time. Wait, have I got an extra question? Yeah, you got another one. <laughs> oh, jeez. I really want to hear it. <laughs> Kimba, how how old how old was Ben when he debuted in the AFL? <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> getting to the end of it. Um, That's good. 17. That is, Rami. Can you put a bit more on there, please? No, really. Thank you. It's really empty. It. I yeah, thought good. like good. seventeen or eighteen, seventeen. Seventeen's correct. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> last one, hey! Benny. Last one for you. Why? Uh, what is Kimber's age? Oh. Nasty question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Even if you get it right, you're wrong, aren't you? All right, here we go. Come on, throw something. Look at Kimba. Take a good look at Kimba. Kimba, can you wipe wipe some of the cream away so we can get a really good look? 43. Oh, actually, that's correct. That is correct. Wow, Wow. well done. Oh, my my God. My birthday's in a couple of weeks. (laughs) Jeez. Nice one by you. I've escaped it. Wow, good job. Escaped the last one. Well done, you two. Um, Oh, (laughs) Nice one, Rami. I feel much better. Why would you? (laughs) That wasn't part of the quiz. That was part of the telethon. That is another 500 bucks by you. Pete's not even wearing a poncho. (laughs) It's it's bloody all over me. Mix 94.5, you with Pete and Kimber. (laughs) Dear Kimber. Well, it's a good dear Kimber today. Mm. I love this one. I mean, not the person involved won't love it, but you can go to mix.com.au if you have a question. You can send it to dear Kimber and we put it out to the mix listeners and see what they think. Today's dear Kimber, I've been single for a while and I finally met someone special. He is such a great guy and I'm really excited about where it could go. Oh, that's nice. He's a massage therapist and he gives the Best massages. A massage therapist. I don't therapist. see what the problem is. Marry him. Just marry him. Mm. Uh, here's the problem. I've told my friends how amazing his massages are, and one of my friends has gone and booked a massage with him. <gasps> she didn't ask me. She's just written it in our group chat that her massage is tomorrow. 
I don't know how to react. I feel weird about my boyfriend touching my naked friend. Can I ask him <laughs> not to go? Help. Let's talk about this. No, Pete, this is not appropriate music for a massage. Yes, it is. No, it's not that type of massage. Oh, it's like just a really oh, okay. nice professional massage. Right, all right. See, that's the thing. I mean, he's, mm. he's a professional, mm. so you shouldn't be too worried about your friend going there. But also, I do understand, it's a little close for comfort, isn't it? Very close for comfort. <laughs> Stop. No, I like it. I reckon, I reckon go. <laughs> no. No, let her go. I, you know what? What a great test for your partner. What a great test. What if this is this is an opportunity to infiltrate don't, and see just how professional he is? Don't start relationships by testing your partner. This well, we is a terrible to, idea. Remember we spoke to that uh, lady where people get her to jump into their yeah. new man's DMs? And we all agreed it's a terrible idea. <laughs> that was very true. What was it? Good 80%? relationships don't start on tests. 80% of blokes fail. I, are you? Do you feel weird about it? It is a bit weird. There are so many great massage therapists out there and I get... When you find someone who does a good job, you want to share it with everyone, but not if you're dating them. Like, this friend should know that it's a bit awkward. He's not looking at you naked. I get that you're covered in a towel and whatever, but it's still, it suddenly seems intimate because you're not one removed, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's just... I think for me, I like, the, the friend... I find it really interesting that the friend has gone. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check this. That's out. what it's oh, that's, fishy. That's really interesting. But I mean, I'm I like, get it when go, you want a good go. massage. But look, can she ask her friend not to go? Is it all right to feel weird about it? I think yes. You can say, "Don't go." You're making it weird. Don't say, "Don't go." Don't go. You're, you're making ma- it weird. You're making it weird by saying, "Don't go." No, you're putting it over the whole thing. You're like right. putting that on everyone. Ask everyone else. Um, Alan in Bullsbrook, what do you reckon about this, mate? What should she do? Well, I reckon, you know, it's their job. You're not going to take a mate to come over and not have a look at your toilet or something, hey, because it's a plumber. Yeah, but that's a bit yeah. different. <laughs> and you're right. Like as I said, he's not going to see her naked because, you know, they hold the towel and they flip and whatever, but it just does feel like you're... I know. It's still it, intimate, isn't it? If my partner was a plumber... I wouldn't be weird about sending her over to my mate's house to do the. Pl- oh, actually, to is fix- that a euphemism? Oh, to fix his Suddenly, seat. you are worried about him doing the yeah, plumbing. Yeah, maybe that is a bit weird. <laughs> Aaliyah in City Beach, can she tell a friend not to go? Is it weird? Yeah, that's so weird. I think that's so not girl code. And what if they ended up end up meeting each other like after the massage and stuff? They can uh, hang out. As in, something. like they they find that they've got a connection. That goes a <gasps> well, bit. Yeah, no, that goes a I'm bit. Not- God, I didn't even think about that, Aaliyah. Because, yeah, that's the point. Like, it, she might just go as a client. He's not going to know any different. But is she going to say, oh, I'm so-and-so's friend? Yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe. awkward. I love I love this. God Kelly so in Belcada, what do you think? Yeah, along the same lines as Aaliyah, if she's serious about him and that's one of her good friends and they're socialising together and he's got intimate knowledge of the friend, I think that that's just too weird. Like, why would you do that? Like, Pete said, there's so many other massage therapists that she could go to. Why would you choose your friend's boyfriend? I oh, know Kimber said it's, that. I know our voices oh, are Kimber. very similar. <laughs> um, but, like, I, <laughs> no, Kelly. That's I, right. I, no, because I'm the one who's like, let her go. I like, no, I, I let her go. It. Do it. I and like, know. And I, no, and, and no, I should point no. out too that's like, you know, when you go for a massage, there's nothing weird going on. Like, for all the men who are no. like, oh my God, I've been letting my girlfriend go and get massaged forever. Don't, like, that's not a thing. There's nothing weird going on. It just seems a bit too close. Yeah. Just is a bit strange. Yeah, well, a lot of people are saying they're, they're all like siding with you. It's a bit too close, a bit strange. I'm going to back myself here and say, let her do it. And then in about a week, call us and let us know how it went. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. You just love the drama. <laughs> I really do. Pete and Kimba. Now, you remember um, back in August in Brisbane when everyone was really shocked by the situation where that man poured hot coffee over the nine-month-old baby? Oh, I remember the photos, the images of the kid in the hospital bed wrapped up in the bandages. It was absolutely horrific. And then what became basically like an international manhunt because the guy – tried to escape Australia or went elsewhere and they were trying to track him down. It was just so bad because everyone was like, who does that? Number yeah. one to a baby. But the idea that 
obviously a random attack where someone would just come up to you and it's completely unprovoked. Well, it's uh, so scary because of the fact that, you know, they were just in a park in Brisbane. They were yeah. just sitting down having a picnic and this guy's appeared out of nowhere. Well, and now we're dealing with it here in WA. Yeah. Because this is exactly what has happened at a shopping centre in Vic Park. Security cameras have captured the horrific moment a woman approaches the mother and her child before hitting the little girl in the face. Oh, I just can't get my head around it. I, I think for me it's the fact that it's just so random. You know, mm. like it, like it, apparently they don't know each other or anything like that. Um, we've got Francesca Denuccio on the line from 7 News ready to join us in just a moment to tell us more. Um, but if you happen to witness it, if you're at the park centre about 1.30 yesterday out in East Vic Park and you happen to witness it, we would love to speak with you this morning. All right, let's get to Francesca Denuccio from 7 News with the latest on it. Good morning. Good morning, thank Hi. you. How are you going? We're good. Thanks so much for talking to us. Can you tell us what took place at this shopping centre? It's so random. Oh, guys, look, I couldn't believe that CCTV when I first saw it. It's just shocking. What we know is that it was a two-year-old girl who was assaulted and basically, yeah, it happened in, in broad daylight just before one thirty in the afternoon yesterday right at the entrance of the uh, Park Shopping Centre in East Vic park uh basically security cameras have captured captured the moment a woman goes up to a mother and her child uh the child's in her mother's arms before the attacker punches the little girl in the face and then flees the shopping center um it's just awful um francesca how's the little girl She's okay. She's okay. She has sustained a bit of swelling to her face, but we know that these aren't serious injuries and she didn't need to go to hospital for any medical treatment. But look, as you can imagine, I'm sure the child and her mother are very shaken up. Francesca, I saw on the WA police uh, pages that they seem to know who the offender is and they're asking for information, trying to find her. But is this suggesting they're already familiar with possibly some behaviours that have already, you know, happened before this one? Yeah, look, we can't suggest that obviously uh, this is the, the same person, but that new update, yeah, from this morning is that, yeah, Cannington Police are seeking information on the whereabouts of a 21-year-old uh, who goes by the name Pamela Ray Jetta. Um, I do believe she'd be able to help with this investigation. She too has been described as having that shaved head um, and was last seen wearing green-coloured shorts with pink stripes pink singlet, um, and also recently been seen wearing a fluoro pink wig. Um, hey, Francesca, have you or anyone that you know had a chance to speak with the mother and talk to her about the incident? Because for, for mine, you know, having taken my kids to the shops, just expecting it to be a, a regular sort of go in, grab what you need, walk out, you know, sort of thing. I think it's the randomness of this attack that is leaving people absolutely gobsmacked. Totally. And look, we haven't been able to have a chance to chat with the mother yet, but yesterday I, I did get a chance to chat with a couple of the shopkeepers who are right beside that entrance and and that's a cheese shop there and a news agency. And look, they told us that it all just happened very quickly, very randomly. They heard screams and saw a couple of people rush over to help the mother and, and her little girl. So just a totally random and scary attack. Thank you, Francesca. appreciate it. No worries. Thank you. All and, right. yeah, hopefully um, this attack is found. All right, Francesca Denuccio from 7 News there. Isn't that terrible? Un- unbelievable. Um, now, look, like the phone, any, anybody call through, Rami? Producer Rami? No, not yet. No. Also on the text lines as well, so text us as well. It happened so quickly, it's probably likely that no one saw it. That's yeah. the thing, is it just was so unexpected. Yesterday we were chatting about relationships and asking whether anyone's parents had tried to break up their relationship. And Nicole from Huntingdale gave us a call and said that her own mum got in the way of her and her husband. My parent, well, my mother, disowned me because I wouldn't leave my husband. (gasps) And we've been scared for 18 years now, and this was about 10 years ago. And so you still don't have contact with your mum? No. Nicole, has she ever explained to you why she doesn't like him? Um, it was a confrontation. My mother's very controlling, controlling, and it's her way or the highway. They had a confrontation, an argument, and it was turned out to be a great big thing. And it was basically, I got told I had to choose between her 
or him oh. and obviously I chose him mm. and it was the best decision I've ever made because we've been together for 18 years now. There you go. It's me or them, the ultimatum. I I've never really understood how ultimatums work. I feel like if someone were to give me an ultimatum, it would probably be the deal breaker in itself. Yeah, maybe there's a reason out there. It's me or them. Who gave you an ultimatum? Because I I felt the same way. But, you know, what if there's also that person in your life who cares really deeply for you and the reason why they're giving you the ultimatum is because they know that maybe the relationship you're in is terrible, but you can't see it. Yeah, you know, that, maybe it's gotten to that stage yeah, where they've got no other choice. But it might not be just relationships. Like for me, I've had a lot of beautiful male friends in my life, people who I care about deeply, and they've gotten a girlfriend, and the girlfriend is uncomfortable with him having a friendship with me mm. and has said, it's me or Kimber. And I've lost mm. friends from my life because women have assumed that there's something going on with me and their partner or that, that that we can't be trusted or whatever it is. I've lost really sincere, authentic friendships in my life that have been like over an ultimatum. But, uh, you know, in the, do you look at that and just go, well, well, see you later? Like, yeah, I, but you it know, I know, it's, heart, I know it breaks your heart, because it's but the I mean, if that's the going, choice, you who know. Who gives that ultimatum over someone to someone that they love? You go, oh, we have to remove this good friend from your life. I, I just feel like, yeah, I don't know, they make me feel icky, but Michelle in Two Rocks... Your partner's mum gave your partner an ultimatum. Yes. Um, so I was became pregnant at 17 um, with my partner and she made up a lot of lies and um, told him that the child wasn't mine. She called oh. me names to my best friend, told him that basically, you know, he's going to be bringing up a child that's not his. And um, so she, you know... He broke up with me for, you know, because he believed his mum's lies because he thought, well, she's his mum, why would she lie? Mm. And um, then my own mum kicked me out of home um, mm. and so I bounced from, you know, couch to couch and slept out on the streets for a little while and um, then he realised that, you know, they were like what his mum was doing and that sort of thing and then so he sold his car and we rented a little place and... Um, but the whole our whole relationship we've been together 32 years now and oh. our whole relationship she's stepped in and at different times and tried to cause trouble our wedding um she i handmade these invitations and things like that and she deliberately did not come to our wedding because she um I didn't hand deliver the invitation and ask her to come oh, that's Michelle. such a long to, held unnecessary her. grudge isn't it yeah I just, I will never be able to understand how a parent can do that to their kid. Well, also I, too, don't, I do not get it. I'll never get it. The types of things she was facing there, you go, no grown woman would be able to handle that kind of vitriol well. Yeah. And to do it to a 17-year-old, you know, like you don't have the resilience to bounce back from that stuff. Like, and Michelle, support, you've done a great job. Yeah, good on you, Michelle. Uh, Liam in Rivervale, you gave the ultimatum to your best mate. What happened? Yeah, so um, when I moved to Australia, I met a, a girl and she became my best friend. We were best friends for over just over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then I met a girl. Uh, she became my fiancé. And um, three years later, I found out she was cheating on me. But oh. my in that time, my best friend had become friends with her. Yeah. And so obviously it ended the relationship. And I couldn't handle that. They were still friends and... She would appear at birthday parties. Oh. And so I gave the ultimatum to my best friend. You either stay friends with her or you stay friends with me. Yeah. Um, she told, she chose my fiancé. And then a year later, they stopped being friends. Oh. And, um, yeah, so that was the and ultimatum. it's cost everyone I, the I friendship. I can understand that ultimatum. Yeah. That makes sense. But, like, oh, how awful. A bit yeah, lost it cost there. me my fiancé and my best friend. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Liam. That sucks. Thanks for your call this morning, Liam. It's horrendous, isn't it? These are horrendous situations. But mm. This is happening around us. Sure is. I got my real truck in my flippy floppy. Mix Money 4.5's Masters Milk Carton Regatta. Oh, hi there, ladies. Saturday, November 23 at Hillary's from 10 till 1. That's where you want to be. Beat.
see that. We have got 30 teams building boats out of milk cartons, Masters milk cartons, and then they race them on the day. And there's prize money. We've got free rides for the kids. It's a big day where everyone comes down and has a good time. I noticed uh, there's some sneak peeks of some of the boat builds on our mixed socials. Yeah. Yeah, on Facebook and Instagram. If you go, I was taking a look and I was like, oh, there are some with like, They're painting them. I know, but they like to keep it secretive because they don't want people to know their boat until the day. Because the designs are amazing and they win a prize. You can win money for having the best design. Yeah, some of them look really big. Yeah. Really big. Like well, They look like they're going hard. It's going to be a spectacle on November 23. It's going to well, be huge. I mean, you and I have um, also made a boat each year and gone out on a bit of a maiden voyage. We haven't raced, but we've kind of gone, hey, this is sort of like the cutting of the ribbon. We go out and we just test it on the waters. So we've had a few years now of being in a boat together, but this year we're going in our own separate boats. Yeah, well, that was your decision, not mine. I I thought we had a great time. I I had a great time with you. Absolutely fantastic time the last few years, (laughs) you and I, but clearly that's not the case. I had a great time with you, but it was just that, like, the experiences that we've had building the boats, like, it took us so many hours to build that first boat, and then we found out you used the wrong glue, (laughs) and it was basically (laughs) dissolving in water. So as soon as, because you don't get to do a, like, a practice round, you've got to just take it to Hillary's and get it in the no, water, and right? And what happens, happens. And so you didn't use the right glue. Then there was the idea that we had nowhere to build it. And so we thought it would be a great idea to build it in the shed on the rooftop at work, which is yeah. so like four stories up. And then we had to try and get the boat down the stairs because it wouldn't fit in an elevator, of course. We'd get it down the stairs, four flights to the car park. It oh. was a nightmare, Pete. I've got the audio here. Have a listen to this. It's great. <laughs> yeah, oh, my hair is stuck in the boat. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Help. Ow. Do you lose it up any height? That's good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. Oh, we're back. Oh, it's off. Where are we going? Uh, there. There, there. Through there. Through there. Yeah. Come on, we're almost yes. there. That was us going down the stairwell because, of course, it was the SS Salt Sea Chain. It was shaped like a giant sausage and it was about four metres long, so you couldn't fit it into it was the like elevator. a long plank. You could hear cartons dropping off. Like, yeah. every foot that we went, more fell off. Yeah. It was really a mess. Um, and I look, I, I get it. I understand it. Well, that's it why tough. last year we went out to the men's shed in Subiaco and said, can you guys make us a boat instead? Because, mm. number one, it's probably more seaworthy than what we had. Well, it worked out quite well. Take a listen to this. Uh, okay. okay. All right. I'm in. That's the easy part. Now it's I believe me and my... in you, and I believe in the community men's shed. My big back. And I believe in oh, the regatta. I think I just <laughs> put a foot through the bottom of the boat. Sit down, Pete! You okay. are a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> go, Captain Stop says. Paddling. Let's go. Guys, we're floating. Yeah. We're floating. Their boat was amazing. Yeah. Like the Subi Men's Shed built such a great boat that the kids were playing on it all afternoon. Everyone was just having a good time on it because it was really seaworthy. So I am looking forward to heading out to the Harrisdale Men's Shed. So they've committed. They've said, guys, we will build your boat, sir, plural, boat, yeah. sir, two boats. So one for you, one for me, and we're assembling our teams yeah. as we speak. But we're going to go out there today and catch up with them and see how things are coming along. I'm actually really looking forward to going out there again to see how far Merv and Andy have come since I saw my boat on Friday. Because Wait, I know Hang over. A sec. Wait, what? What do you mean since you saw your boat on Friday? Well, I knew over the weekend they were having a barbecue and they had a few blokes coming to help. And I was like, so I think that it's probably advanced a fair bit since I've seen it then. Um, and Merv and Andy, like, you know, because they've hey, built hang on it. A sec. Wait a minute. You, you know them by name, Merv and Andy. And yeah. you went and saw the boat on Friday. Yeah. And. Today is just like a see how they a progress. I visit. have been left out of all of these conversations. Really? Yes. Oh, I even know what like because mine's like this big spearmint extravaganza. I'm making my entire boat out of spearmint master's milk because it's my favourite. I haven't even spoken to them about mine yet. What? What the hell is going on, <laughs> Brooke? Because I know Brooke, producer the producer. Brooke. What is going on? Why am I finding this out now? Um. I'm going to choose not to comment. <laughs> you guys are sabotaging me. What is no, going on? This you, is absolute how sabotage. How is it sabotage? If I'm more invested in oh, in a relationship with Merv and Andy and getting the Harrisdale men's shed to put my spearmint extravaganza together, 
then you I've know. been waiting on. I've been waiting on the guys to tell me, uh, like, okay, you can oh. catch up with them and you can do this. So and you would can do you that say I've been more proactive in trying to win the oh, Masters oh, regatta? Right. Do you I think see, that's? I see how it is. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks to Masters. So looking Pr- forward to going out to Harrisdale yeah, today. Yeah, me too. Proudly Aussie owned and made right here in Bentley for over fifty years. Okay, I see what's happening here. Yeah, I'm looking at you too, Rami. <laughs> we picked all the best bits from the Pete and Kimber show for this podcast to save you more time. And my place IQ saves Aussies up to forty six percent on air conditioning bills. Learn more at myplace.com.au.